So I've been writing my own operating system, and when it's done, this little RTOS should enable multitasking on the STM32 blue pill. But when I was on Twitch designing this OS, I had a hard time thinking, how am I going to do task synchronization? For those of you that don't know, task synchronization is the computer science problem of synchronizing the execution of two tasks or threads that use the same global data to prevent data corruption or misinterpretation. So for example, if I have two threads, thread A and B, and the task of both threads is the same to print global counters and then decrement them, this will create a synchronization problem. The problem is that while the counter lives in global shared memory, when thread A goes to retrieve the counter from memory and print it, thread B may have already decremented the counter, but hasn't had time to store it back into memory. This condition, known as a race condition, is what task synchronization fixes. An easy way to do task synchronization, for example, is using a mutex or a mutual exclusion object. Think of a mutex as a talking stick. If our previous example had a mutex, then when thread A locked the mutex, only thread A could access the counter to print it and decrement it. In C, the way you use a mutex is actually pretty simple. Create a mutex structure globally, initialize it with the p thread mutex init function, and then when you want to block a piece of code to only be executed by one thread at a time, lock that thread using the p thread mutex lock function. Then when the critical part of code is over, unlock it. Pretty straightforward. But this got me thinking, how does a mutex even work? How would I implement a mutex in my operating system? Doesn't multiple threads trying to access a single mutex also create a race condition? Couldn't two threads accidentally acquire the same mutex in a race condition at the same time? The way this all works is actually really cool. All the mutex is at the end of the day is an integer value in global memory. When it's initialized, a mutex is set to the number one and just floating in the ether. The interesting part then is how you interface with the mutex. Like I said before, if the mutex were just the number one, then two threads interacting with it could naturally create a race condition. This is where the idea of atomic operations comes in. Atomic operations are instructions within the processor that are impossible to interrupt. In Intel assembly, for example, the lock prefix tells the processor to execute an instruction atomically, meaning no one is able to access the memory targeted by the instruction until the instruction completes execution. So how does this matter for mutexes? Remember how I said before that mutexes were just a global integer value? This is still true. A mutex is just a value, zero or one, that indicates to the thread if the lock has been acquired or not. Here is an example assembly snippet of how you could do a lock in MIPS assembly. Here, we load the lock into a temporary register. If it's one, we continue to spin until it's not locked, then we can access it. Or if it's zero, we lock the mutex and continue on with our day. But like I said before, this inherently is vulnerable to a race condition. What if two threads try to lock a mutex at the same time and race on the access to that lock? Again, this is where atomic operations will save the day. In this correct MIPS implementation of a mutex, we load two values into temporary registers, a locked and an unlocked state. Using the atomic MIPS operation compare and swap, we can atomically in one instruction compare the unlocked value to the lock, and if it succeeds, it swaps it into T1. Once we compare that value of the output, we can fall through to our critical code section. In the case that it is not locked already, we then have to loop around. In the case that it is previously locked, we loop to the top of the function and wait for it to not be locked. And then now, using this atomic lock, we can create our own mutex implementation in assembly that we can use in our OS. That's all for now, guys. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.